Okay, so we just looked at a whole host of undecidable problems over languages of Turing machine encodings of some sort, also sometimes paired with their inputs. So it's like looking at Turing machines and proving certain things about them is kind of tough, is what it seems. Uh, now the proof technique that we used was often to parameterize some other Turing machine, some other subroutine that we then used to decide a problem that we know is undecidable. And it seemed like we kept using the same proof technique. So I want to see if there's a unifying theory that I can come up with here to kind of the proof to rule all proofs or to rule many of them. Okay, so we won't be able to prove everything this way, but, but a lot of these proofs are very similar. All right, so let's jump right into it. Something called Rice's theorem. So what Rice's theorem says is given a language L over string encodings of Turing machines, which you know I would depict usually in that way, um, and a property P of the language with two conditions. So okay, so first I'm going to finish establishing this property, and then I'll I'll, I'll complete the proof. So the two conditions of this property are first that that property is non-trivial. So at least one Turing machine satisfies this property, and not all Turing machines satisfy this property. So as an example, you know, I could say something like a non-trivial property is that um, it, you know the Turing machine does not, or I should say, you know, M does not accept any palindromes. So that's certainly true of some turn machines. It's certainly true, um, not true of other turn machines. So that's not trivial. Um, a trivial property would be something like um, M accepts strings with zeros or rejects strings with zeros. Because every every turn machine does that. <laughs> Either accepts or rejects, right? So, so that wouldn't be particularly interesting condition. All right, our second condition on the property P of this language is that um, P is a semantic property. In other words, P does not depend on implementation details of the Turing machine. Said so more formally, I would say M, so this the string coding of this Turing machine is, is in the language, if and only if, um, the the language of M satisfies the property. So, so nothing specific about the Turing machine M, but, but just the language that, that the Turing machine recognizes satisfies the property. So that's called a semantic property. So for example, you know, the reg TM is a semantic property of a language because you know, it doesn't really matter how I wrote it down as a Turing machine. What it matters is that that Turing machine is recognizing a regular language. That's something semantic about the language. Um, so that is a semantic property of, of what the Turing machine is doing. A uh, two right TM though is, is not actually a semantic property. I mean, I could take a two tape Turing machine that writes to the second tape, reduce it to an equivalent one tape Turing machine and that would maybe rec you know would recognize the exact same language, and then I leave the second tape blank, and so I could construct an equivalent machine with the same language that recognizes the same language that, that does not write to the second tape, and so that that's not a semantic property. It actually depends on implementation details. So that was kind of a dead giveaway here. The fact that that I was talking about some of the the guts of the Turing machine means that it couldn't have been a semantic property because I'm supposed to only care at a high level about. Um, what language is recognized by this Turing machine. So, we have this property P over a language L, over, over some Turing machines. And if P satisfies these conditions, then L is undecidable. That's Rice's theorem. So actually, straight off the bat, if Rice's theorem is true, we can use it to prove that reg TM is undecidable because 
Well, RegTM is a non-trivial property. Certain term machines are going to be recognized by regular languages. Certain term machines are not. There are some that do and there are some that don't. Um, and it's a semantic property. Like I said already, this, this is about re what, what language this machine recognizes. By the same token, ETM is also satisfying Rice's theorem because certain machines are you know, going to recognize empty languages, certain machines are not. But, you know, and so, so this is not true of all, all machines and not false about all machines. But it's also a semantic property. We, we're not caring so much about the implementation details of them, just that um, any string that I feed it is going to get rejected. That, that is a property about the language. All right, so, so that's Rice's theorem. Now, how would I prove that? Okay, I told you, it seemed like we were doing the same thing over and over again with these subroutines. So maybe I'll, I'll pull out one of these subroutines and see if I can, can prove Rice's theorem in a similar way. So I will do the same thing where, where you know, let's assume that, so suppose I have a language L with a property P satisfying the conditions of Rice's theorem. And so what I'll do is I will, okay, so, so use the fact that um, since it satisfies non-triviality, I can take out machines that satisfy P and machines that don't. Okay, so, so let's say let A be machines that satisfy and B be machines that don't. So actually I can even, you know, I can even make that a language. So I could say, I guess I'll let A be the language of machines that satisfy and B be the language of machines that don't. Okay, so that's, that's one thing I'll use. Um, and so then what I'll do is, you know, I'm going to assume that, assume also that I, I have a decider. And you'll call it D for the language. So, okay, Let, let's, let's look at it this way. So I'm going to make some kind, again, some kind of subroutine parameterized by um, M and W for, for, some, for M and W that I'm going to decide for ATM. And so I'll run M on W. If M accepts W, then I'll shapeshift this machine into a machine that satisfies my property P. There must have been some machine. So I'll just, you know, pick a machine in A and run it. And if it accepts, I'll accept. Otherwise, I'll reject. Um, otherwise, I'll shapeshift into a machine that does not satisfy the property P. And so I'll just run that machine. So, so I'll pick a machine in B and run it. If the machine accepts, I will accept. If the machine rejects, I will reject. And so here I'm using the fact that, so, so two things. Number one, yes, yeah, so I'll just say if machine accepts, then accept, otherwise reject. And same thing if I'm, I'm running a machine that does not satisfy the property. So I always, whenever I do a proof of something, I always have to make sure that I'm, that I'm satisfying the conditions of the proof. Otherwise, I might accidentally be proving something more general. That, that could be good, or but usually I'm making a mistake. So let me see, am I satisfying the properties here? Well, I'm certainly satisfying non-triviality. I have to satisfy non-triviality for this, the proof to make sense. I'm using that fact here because I have to be able to choose at least one machine that, that, that satisfies the property. I have to be able to, to choose at least one machine that does not satisfy the property in order for me to do the if, if and the else statement here respectively. Um, I'm also only using a semantic property. So I'm only looking at acceptance, right? Oh, one thing I forgot to say here, we're running these machines on S, just like we were up here, right? When I was looking at um, reg TM. I wanted to actually run my my machine or, or do my language check on a string. But yeah, again, we're not we're not we don't care how the machine works. We just care if the end result is is accepting or rejecting. So we're using both 
the non-triviality property, get us both the if and the else, and then we're using the semantic property when we run the machine and we just care about accepting. Okay, so how do we then use our decider for, for deciding if the language has this property? Supposedly we, we can do that. Um, how do I use the decider to, to, to then decide ATM? So what I would do is say, okay, if the decider accepts this automaton, um, th that can only happen if, if the automaton acts like a machine that satisfies this property. And the only way it's gonna act like a machine that satisfies this property is if M accepts W, right? So it's the same kind of logic we've been doing the whole along. It's just a little bit more general now. So, so that's really it. Um, if, if I find that this thing has shape-shifted into a machine that acts like it's, it's satisfying our property, then we accept, because the only way that can happen is if M accepts W. Otherwise, we reject, because it's going to shape-shift into a machine that does not act like it has a property. So therefore, um, M must not have accepted W. So I just created a decider for ATM. So, so this allowed me to create a decider for ATM. So therefore, um, my assumption was false. So my assumption that um, L was decidable, or, or that L had a decider, was false. So, so there is the proof by contradiction. So it may be easier to use Rice's theorem sometimes because rather than going through this whole thing again, which we keep doing over and over again, um, just just prove that the, that the property of your language is non-trivial and, and semantic, and then you can just apply Rice's theorem. So, so this is something that comes up when you're looking at languages over Turing machines, because often it's like meta, meta things we want to say about our code, right? Could I have more simply implemented my code with a with a, a DFA, right? Or actually, I have I have a problem on the homework that that I think is interesting. So. Um, on, on homework eight, I say, you know, w w you know, language M of Turing machines, where the Turing machine accepts both of, if it accepts a forward string, it accepts the reverse string as well. Um, and then I have another problem, which actually, unfortunately, you can't apply Rice's theorem to, because it talks about implementation details of the Turing machine, so we can't. We can't actually apply Rice's theorem here, but, but this is actually kind of useful. So you'll need to go through a little bit more of a detailed proof here. But Rice's theorem can, can sometimes save you time. All right, so that, that's it. Um, I'm just going to have you do a little exercise identifying languages where Rice's theorem apply. And then we'll continue on and, and go back and talk about more stuff about decidable languages.